I quickly, before we hand it over to my brother right now, I just want to quickly share a quick little testimony, man, that happened this week. Um, just a lesson that I learned that, well, I've kind of known it, but it's kind of um, pushed a more of an understanding on me. Um, <clears throat> the, the other day, was it? Yeah, so two days ago, me and my wife were at a, a store, and there's a store that's owned by a church, and we like to go there because, one, they do wholesale. They wholesale items, and two, um, they help a lot of people. So we like to go there and bless them by, you know, spending our money there and buying stuff there. Um, and was there, and um, I knew on my in my bank, I only had a certain amount of money in my account because when me and my wife um, do our transactions, we only put the amount that we need in our in the banks because in the past I've been scammed before. I had somebody um, clean out my whole entire account, and it took like a while to get it back. Now. So we've been doing that for a while. We've kind of made it a routine. So I only had like $60 in my account and there was like $120 we needed to spend, um, pay. So I knew uh, my wife said, it's okay. I got some of my account. So I'll pay the rest of my account. I said, okay, cool. Go ahead. Which, which couples sometimes do that. But her, her, um, her card wasn't working. So my wife went on the, went on the app application to, to her transfer money into my account or her account and I'll work it out. But the app wasn't working. So I had to go call the bank and try to tell the bank, you know, um, can you transfer money to my account? Because the app's not working. I tried it on my account. My app wasn't working. There was a message that said, um, currently the app is not working. It was an automated message. And internet and, and phone banking is not working. We sorry for the inconvenience. Um, so you have to go into a bank to get the money. Now, we was like 25 minutes away from a bank. And there was, there was some people behind us waiting and that was the thing that that worried me the most. Not that we didn't have the money. It was there was people waiting. And I do not like people waiting. I don't like to inconvenience people. I've never been that kind of person. Um, even though my wife said to me, it's okay. Understand. It's not the end of the world. I'm like, yeah, but these people. So um, I said to the lady, I said, listen, can I quickly go to the store? Um, sorry, to the bank and get the money. My wife will wait here or vice versa. She said, fine. She said, I'll move to another register. Um, and I'll close this one down for the mean, my meantime. And when you get back, we'll fix it up. And um, so I, before I before I left, I was like, you know what? I'm going to pray first. I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to say, God, you know what, Lord? I put it in your hands, Lord. I thank you. Lord, you've been here. God, you've been here for me every other time. I just want to give you the glory and thank you for what you're doing, Lord. And whatever's happening, Lord Jesus, I know you got our back. And just a, before, just as I was about to leave the store mm -hmm. to go to go take um, go to the bank, a lady that was on another register that I actually helped earlier with her um, groceries, put her on the register, um, came over and said, I'll pay the remainder of the money that you guys are, you guys are owing. I said, no, you don't have to do that because I've never in my life ever had anybody pay for my groceries. I've done it a bunch of times with people, but I've never wanted it, never asked for it. But she said, no, I insist. And I said, listen, let me get your number. I'll, I'll, when, when I fix this situation now, I'm going to come back and pay you for it. She goes, no, no, I want to pay it for it. I want to bless you. So I was like, I, I started getting like really emotional. I was like, you know what? I, I really appreciate it because I've never experienced it in my life. Um, and I said to her, you know what? I'm going to come back as soon as I fix this out. And I'm going to bless the next two people in this store because I, I feel so blessed right now. I've never had anybody do this before to me. I've never been on the receiving ends. I've always been on the giving end. Um, and I never knew what I felt like. And I thought back to myself, I'm like, a lot of times when I had and wanted to bless somebody at a store, or pay for the groceries, even randomly just do it. I've had a lot of people say to me, you don't have to do it. You don't have to. It's okay. Uh, or people sometimes say, no, no, it's fine. I'm a born I've been I've been not receiving in. I've been never receiving in now. And I'm like, okay, now I got to. Now I got understanding what it feels like to actually receive a blessing without asking for it. Um, and it just made me feel a certain way. You know what I mean? So it got me thinking, you know what? I'm now understanding what people feel like when we go ahead and bless them. The feeling that it makes them feel, man, I was so grateful. We're in the car praying for like 20 minutes, just giving glory to God and thanking God. I'm like, God, you know what? It's, that blessing came from you. That was you. I pray that you bless that woman. I even told her that God bless you. I really, you know, if it wasn't for this whole Me Too movement, I probably would have gave her a hug. But you know how this day, this day and age, people get so offended and so 
So I said to her, I said to her, listen, uh, so I ended up, my wife had so much things that we had to do that day. So she said, listen, we can't come back to the store right away. We've got to do things. And one thing turned into another that we didn't go yesterday. No, the other day. We didn't go. So I told my wife, listen, first thing tomorrow, which was yesterday, we go into that store and I'm going to bless the first two people that I that ended up behind me because I had to get my wife two things because that's why we put two things back to increase the price of what we had to pay. And it was one of my wife's favorite things to get. So I went back and grabbed this and um, I paid for, I offered to pay for the two people behind me. The first people were confused because their English wasn't the best. But when, I, when they found out what I was doing, they're like, oh, thank you. God bless you. The lady behind started bawling her eyes out. She never, ever had to happen to her in her life. And I said, it's okay. I just want to bless you. God bless you. I love you. Jesus loves you. Have an awesome day. And I, I left. And then as I was walking out, because my daughter was with me because she had to go to the bathroom, uh, I stopped because they had a bunch of produce that they usually do outside the store. And they said, you can take some. So I had a box and I was getting some, I was getting some peppers and I was grabbing some and Lily came out after me and she started crying and she gave me a hug and said, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm like, you know what? Sometimes we just got to take a time because at the end of the day, it's, um, we've got to consider that sometimes people are going through things and it doesn't take much to just stop and be like, you know what? Even if it's a gesture, I've just wanted to say you love them or just tell somebody, you know, are you okay? Can I help you? Um, we've got to understand on the receiving end that at the end of the day, Sometimes people are going through things, you know, are just really going through things and that little gesture of being able to bless them. Like I said, it's not always financial. Sometimes you just bless them with time, with a hug, with a just a spare moment. And um, yeah, it was just huge, man, to me. I was like, and I'm still buzzing on it, man, because I never had it happen in my life to me. Not as a story like that. I'm never, and like I said, I didn't need the money, but because of the app, I know what it felt like. And I was like, wow, you know what? I'm going to stop, man, because, yeah, but at the end of the day, um, we just got to give glory to God, man, you know, at the end of the day, like, we have to um, trust in him, because we can worry about everything else, but the fact that I stopped and gave glory to him and said, God, you know what, and literally instantly, just had to finish uh, praying, I was walking out the door, and she stopped me, so, um, yeah, just believe in him, man, he's always got your back, regardless how big or small. Anyway, I'm going to pass it over to um, our brother, all the way from um, Nigeria in by way of, is it California or D.C.? Calif California, there you go. You can put up the West Coast. <laughs> Brother in Seacon <laughs> coming with part two. Let's get it, man. Amen. First and foremost, I want to thank God for allowing um, this platform in making, um, giving me the opportunity to minister to our brothers. This brotherhood has been a blessing to me. But um, I wouldn't be where I am today if not for Brother Henry. Because Brother Henry, Brother Henry is, is like a brother, but he's a family to me. Some of you that don't know, my wife and his wife are cousins. So <laughs> we are just connected. Just like that, we just connected. But it's deeper. It's deeper than that. It's just like um, Jesus and John the Baptist. Is 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 they are cousins, but their connection is deeper than that. Even when Jesus Christ was getting baptized, John the Baptist looked at Christ and said, "I will, I would rather be baptized by you." And Christ was like, "No, suffer it so to be now, that we must fulfill all righteousness." I just want to take this time and thank Brother brother Henry. I said, Brother Henry, thank you, because it goes back to 2021 when we were in Nigeria. Because um, brother, brother Henry knows Nigeria a lot. <laughs> we go way back. We're still having the fire from our conversations in 2021. And it's been able to sustain itself till today. When he came back, the first thing he told me was like, I'm going to join the platform. And I was like, I don't know. And then my wife told me, listen, when, when Bro Henry speaks, he has a passion of an eagle. Whenever he, whatever he puts his mind on, he pursues it. You might as well pursue it so you could be on the same frequency. I said, okay. So ever since I've joined, I've been sizzling since. And um, not only that, because of, because of the platform, 
not only have I sizzled in the platform, I'm sizzling in church. And it's, it's been a blessing. I just want to take time and thank Brother Henry. To may God bless him and his family. And that's why today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to give you all a double whammy. A double whammy, yeah. <laughs> Me and Brother Henry have been talking about this topic we're going to share. And um, we hope that you all will be full today. So without much ado, I'll let um, Brother Henry take the floor and be of blessing. And I say, may Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Brother Henry, over to you. Amen, brother. Amen. I, I appreciate you uh, you saying that. Um, and hey, bro, you're welcome. Um, I know what these platforms uh, between Monday and Tuesday nights have meant to me. So just to be able to share that with a with a brother, with a brother in Christ, um, it's the least you know. It's the least I could do. It's the least we can do as brothers to bring other brothers in, into these forums. Um, and, and it's funny that you say like they're cousins because they got other cousins that they're nowhere near as close with, even siblings that they're not even as close with. So they're more like sisters and cousins. And so I think it's appropriate that that we are, especially on this platform, um, engaged as brothers. And so part of the reason um, I know in, in our conversations that Tikan wanted to kind of um, tag team this one is because we wanted to discuss wisdom and understanding. And it's interesting because we, we both have different perspectives because he's from Nigeria and I'm from America and I've obviously visited Nigeria now twice and him living in America now. So we kind of have these cross cultural perspectives that, that, that lend to our walk with Christ and our understanding of scripture and the Bible and the spiritual things. So I'm gonna share a couple of just quick definitions um, the word wisdom, uh, just in the dictionary, the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, or maybe even the body of knowledge and principles that develops within a specified society or period. So the wisdom of the age of Israel, the wisdom of, you know, 2000 plus 5,000 years ago can be different from the wisdom of today in some people's eyes. Now, the word understanding the ability to comprehend something, an individual's perception or judgment of a situation, to perceive the intended meanings of words, which is important when we're talking about scripture, but also the perception of the significance, explanation, or cause of something. And then uh, another one that I really liked about understanding, a complete and thorough knowledge or grasp of a subject, and then grasping the concepts nuances and interrelationships between different elements. Because we we now understand, especially as we go through this book that we call the Bible, that we can know scripture, which may be the, the knowledge of what the Bible says, but then to understand the depths of the spiritual realities around us sometimes means looking at one scripture and then looking at another scripture that refers back to that first verse. Uh, for instance, um, you know, the, I mean, and there's a lot of stuff that, listen, the Western church just doesn't teach. We got to be honest. Now, there are a lot of biblical scholars who will refer to things like Genesis 6, 1 through 7, um, as far as how angels were creating abominations on earth, mating with women, and you go to the scripture um, where it says in, in uh, verse two in chapter six, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. They were beautiful. They took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And then it goes on in verse four to discuss how there were giants on earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Now, Verse five then refers to the how the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth 
and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, jumping forward to the days of Jesus in Luke 17, 20, uh, or basically between 20 and 30, um, I'll paraphrase, I'll paraphrase, but he refers to the coming of the kingdom. He refers to as in the days of Noah in verse 26. And then he refers to in the days of Lot. So what was going on in those days? Things we are seeing today, wickedness, sexual immorality, the ignoring of God's laws. And most importantly, some of these abominations are beginning to reoccur or at least get more, um, get more popular, we'll say. Um, you got genetic modification of food and animals, which believe me, if they tested on them, they're probably testing on somebody somewhere. Uh, we got AI already. AI is doing crazy things, doing kids homework for them, uh, creating news stories where you don't know if a person wrote it, if a person investigated that, or they just let AI run wild. You got artificial, we've got companies creating artificial wounds. So we're already trying to take God's plan out of the picture. And we literally have a Pope leading the charge for a one world religion. So again, these are things that because of the times and because of the day's wisdom, people act as if oh, like, oh, you know, this is just progress. This is just scientific, you know, breakthrough. This is just, you know, our culture nowadays. No, these are as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot. These are things that are occurring that should not be happening right now. Um, so I'm gonna go through a couple of the scriptures that, that just referred to the ability to, to receive a better understanding when we take scripture as a whole into play. Um, for instance, in Deuteronomy 32, verse eight, um, it says, when the most high assigned lands to the nations, he divided up the human race. He established the boundaries of the peoples according to the number in his heavenly court. That's an NLT. The ESV says, according to the number of sons of God, but you do have some versions that will say based on the sons of Israel. But if this was, now this is after the fall of the Tower of Babel, Israel was not yet in existence yet. And based on the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Septuagint, Septuagint, I'm sorry, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, um, it, it is according to the number of his heavenly court or the sons of God. And so making sure that we have these understandings that when these cultures talk about their gods, like Egyptian gods, Roman, Greek, like all these pantheons, uh, Hindu gods, like these things were actual entities that existed and that had to some extent dominion over those cultures because of, again, mankind, sin, trying to reach the heavens. God's like, no, nah, I'm going to tear down the tower. I'm going to split y'all up and y'all going to go amongst these, these angels that are on the earth. Like these are real entities and, and we got to, we got to be aware of that. So jump into the New Testament and we talk about the Pharisees who had knowledge. They knew scripture back and forth. The kids could recite the Torah. Now the Pharisees and Sadducees, they may have thought themselves wise, but they had no understanding because literally the Messiah they had been waiting for was right there in front of them. John, uh, in John 8, 39 through 44, we got Jesus speaking, and he refers to them being of their father, the devil. And was it their pride, just like their father, who kept them from seeing Yeshua as the Messiah? Like, it's a question we can ask that to me seems highly likely, because if their father is the devil, then clearly we take on attributes of our fathers, both genetically and and um just in, in the way we interact and act. Um, so, so again, we, we want wisdom, we want knowledge, but we got to make sure we have understanding because right there in front of them, the Messiah. And he goes on to say how, uh, for you are children of your father, the devil, 
He has always hated the truth. There's no truth in him. So now y'all don't believe me because I'm telling the truth. So I'm, I'm going to move on to some other scriptures. And it was interesting when I was doing this word study on understanding. In 66 books of the Bible, the word understand or understanding came up with 286 results. So almost 300 results in 66 books. So understanding is clearly a, a priority in our walk with Christ. So scriptures like Isaiah 42, I'm sorry, Isaiah 47, 12 through 15. And th again, this is just, just another uh, kind of example because we it, it refers to sorcery and astrology. So it says, stand now with your enchantments, with your enchantments and the multitude of your sorceries. In 13, it says, let now the astrologers, stargazers, and so on. Verse 14 says, behold, they shall be a stubble, the fire shall burn them. So that tells me, okay, so God don't like you dealing with sorcery, witchcraft, astrology, but we need the understanding to make sure that we're not tying our identities to horoscopes and astrological signs. Because if scripture tells us that those, those people who follow those things will burn in the fire, then we need to make sure we're tying our identity to Christ versus those things. Deuteronomy 1, 13, choose wise, understanding, and knowledgeable men from among your tribes. I will make them heads over you. So again, the combination of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, because without the three together, and definitely without wisdom and understanding, you, you're just not where you need to be. We're just not quite there. And this is something that I dealt with myself because I thought that I could know Christ without reading the word. I thought I could know God without pressing into the Bible, into scripture. But it wasn't until I began to press into scripture that I truly felt the love of the Holy Spirit wash over me, which was at the point where all, all kinds of other things changed in my life as well. And, and some of y'all know this, I smoked weed for 25 years. I thought it was cool. I thought I was enlightened. But I all of a sudden had the understanding that I don't need this. This is not what God wants for me. And it was time at that point for me to put it down. And it was no longer like, oh, I need it. I want it. Even though I, I you know, it was clearly an addiction in my life to that point because I had tried to go without it and probably never went more than like a day or two without it in those 25 years. But all of a sudden this understanding washes over me through his Holy Spirit, which came through learning him and getting to know him and my relationship with him. So cl clearly, y'all, I mean, just based on the number of results about the word understanding, there's going to be a ton of scriptures. Some of my favorites, um, Psalm 14, 2, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if they are any who understand, comma, who seek God. So that tells me right there that seeking him brings understanding. Uh, Proverbs 1.5, a wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. So you can increase your learning, but there's more to it. There's more to receiving understanding, receiving that counsel, whether it by uh, why, you know, people who understand things already or Holy Spirit in your life. Uh, I can't forget Jeremiah 51, 5. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heaven by his understanding. So understanding is always, always going to be part of it. And I'll probably, oh, there's none who understands. This is from Romans 3, 11. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. So if you're not seeking after God, there's going to be a limitation to your understanding. So I'll, I'll leave it right there for now because I know, I know, I just warmed up the plate. My man in Sikhan is about to sizzle. But um, again, guys, 
with knowledge, with wisdom, we've got to have understanding and the understanding that only comes through his Holy Spirit and through our relationship with Christ and our God in heaven. Amen. Um, based upon the last, the last verse you mentioned, Brother Henry, I'm going to go from there and then I'm going to build. I'll let the Holy Spirit lead me on this topic because this topic is too heavy. In the same Romans chapter 3, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The glory of God. And that's why let's just, because if you think that you know, you might as well empty what you know. In order to get the knowledge of God, you have to empty everything you know. That's why when the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter 9. And then from Jeremiah chapter 9, I'm going to go to verse 23. And the Bible says, Thus said the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory it, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. So we've heard the human version of what knowledge understanding, and wisdom means. From, the, from human perspective, knowledge is the facts, is the truth. Understanding is our ability to make sense of the facts. And wisdom is our diligence to apply, to execute, to bring about to fruition. So that's wisdom according to human comprehension. But to understand God's version, we have to go back to the beginning. Because in the beginning, God created us for one specific purpose. He created us for fellowship with him. Can you believe that God gave man only one instruction? One, just one. He told him, you can eat of every food of the garden. But when it comes to this very tree, the tree of knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil, you should not eat. For the, the very day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. And so we disobeyed. And I don't think the knowledge that we, we got into our system was the knowledge that God gave us, what God intended for us. There was a knowledge that God wanted us to achieve. Did God was, was God going to give us the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Probably. But we had to attain a certain level of understanding before. And that's why God says in his word in the book of Proverbs, by wisdom, God founded the foundations of the earth. And by wisdom, by understanding, he established the heavens. But the Bible also says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So what is this knowledge? It's the knowledge of God, which is the word of God is the knowledge of the Logos. Because the Rama is what we need in order to catapult us to the realm of understanding. God doesn't want us to, 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 to spew out words based upon our realm of knowledge. No. That's why the Bible says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, however, and depart from evil. That's the simple instruction. 
So God doesn't want us to, to speak because we know. God wants us to speak from a realm of understanding. Because if we want to be spiritual, God says, my throne, heaven is my throne. That's where the glory abounds. And the earth is my footstool. That's where the glory rests. The glory rests on wisdom, but his throne is established in understanding. So in order for you to be spiritually inclined, because understanding precedes wisdom, you must be spiritual. To, you have to ascend to the heavenly realms to attain understanding before you walk in wisdom. Because God founded the earth in wisdom, that means for us to really abound in grace, we must abide in Christ in order to abound in grace. That's wisdom. The Bible says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. First of all, you must abide in the secret place. That's the realm of understanding. And then you can, you can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's the realm of wisdom. But the question still remains, what is understanding? We already got the knowledge part right. We, we, we are very knowledgeable people. But in order for us to surpass that knowledge, we have not been able to break that ceiling of understanding. Even Job, the Bible says in the book of, even Solomon had this question. What is knowledge? What is wisdom? What is understanding? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. How much do you know God? Do you know God in all his entirety? There are so many variations that we have not even crossed the threshold of knowing who God is. So some people, we have known God for the Jehovah, Rapha the healer. We have not known God as Jehovah, the deliverer. We have not known the Jehovah, the one that gives one power to give wealth. We have not even known the, G, the God of war. We have not even, there are so many variations to God. So for you to even know him in order to operate like him, you must attain a level of understanding. But I'm going to take it back to Genesis. Because the moment we ate of that fruit, we became double-minded. We had the capacity to do good and the capacity to embrace evil. Job also had this, had this question in Job chapter 28. What did Job say? Job said in Job chapter 28, the last verse, it says that, and unto man he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. It's not the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the big, is, is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So if you, you need to write that verse down, Job chapter 28, verse 28. It has given us more clarity to know that to depart from evil is the understanding. But what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. So the question is, what is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord, as I was made here, I said, Holy Spirit, the fear of the Lord, because everybody thinks the fear of the Lord is to be afraid. I even asked that in my Sunday class, what is the fear of the Lord? I said, being afraid. No, 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 no. I'll give you two verses to describe it. Psalms chapter 96, verse 9. It says, Oh, worship the Lord. In the beauty of holiness, fear before him all the earth. So the fear of the Lord is reverence in worship. 
That's the secret. Wisdom is acknowledging, acknowledging the Lord in worship. That's the simple. The highest calling of every believer, the highest calling of every believer is worship. Even in heaven right now, there is worship. Even Psalm chapter 96, 99 verse 9, the Bible says, Psalm chapter 99 verse 9, what does it say? 99 verse 9, it says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. That means for you to worship the Lord, you must be able to understand holiness because it's only then can you discern good from evil. When you know holiness and you know to depart from evil, you are a wise man. That's wisdom. But worship is the goal. The Bible says in John chapter 91, verse 9, verse John chapter 9, verse 31. The Lord does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, him he hear it. And the Bible says in John chapter 4, verse 22 to 23, that the Lord is looking for true worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Worshipers. True worshipers. Because when you combine all these things, knowledge, understanding, wisdom, when you bundle them together, you know what it is, you know why, you know how, it all becomes what we call discernment. The mark of true maturity. Discernment. Knowing God's ways. Knowing God's thoughts. Because the goal of wisdom is fellowship with God. That's the goal. God wants us to go back to the beginning, which was simply fellowship with God. Amen? I have so much because if I go to, if I go to Ephesians chapter 1 in the New Testament, if I go to the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 1, and then I go to verse 17, the Bible says that the Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, the Holy Spirit, and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. That is the goal. That is the goal. To know God in all his entirety. Even though it's going to take a lifetime will not be enough. <laughs> we will not have enough time. Because God's timing, a day in God's eyes, is a thousand years. Our days, <laughs> is just merely 24 hours. Our time is, God's time is moving fast. Our time is slow. But guess what? Our demise is close. So we ain't got no time in our hands. We might as well take advantage of what we can do now. So... I bet, Burr Henry, you have something to add because um, I know you, you have something to add to sizzle this thing. Bro, um, I'll, <laughs> I'll say this. And honestly, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm just quote Christ a couple times because he, he tells it. I mean, with, with, with his parables, with the the level of understanding that he imparted in his short ministry. Mm -hmm. It was, it was like everything coming together because Holy Spirit had given scripture 
but it took for our Heavenly Father to come down here on earth to get it through somebody's thick skull, <laughs> everything that he had been trying to teach us the whole time. Some, some will quote Matthew 13, 15, for the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their, are, their, <laughs> their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts in turn so that I should heal them. No wonder, Christ John, used, no wonder why Christ used parables. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. It, it was almost as if he was speaking to children that he had to create stories to break down these complex ideas that weren't really all that complex, but he wanted to make sure that they got the point. And then just thir John 13, 7, Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Hmm. And then what? I mean, he, he, he went to the cross for us. He left us his Holy Spirit so that we could have the understanding that scripture throughout the generations had been trying to impart. Exactly. And now we've got both scripture and his Holy Spirit to make sure that we get it. Even Christ himself, he said, he said, I can only do what I see my father doing. And the Bible says, and the Bible says, and the Bible says, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for I have finished the work which you have sent me. He saw the end. He did everything from start to finish. Only, only the Holy Spirit can make that happen. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of knowledge. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of understanding. We cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. So, Bro Henry, you have anything else to drop? <laughs> I mean, honestly, bro, without taking up a whole another meeting on, on some things, because as you know, as, as you have not you and I talked a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, my pastor, I, I'll call him my pastor. I, I attend his online church because he's based in New York, Indiana. He's got a few campuses, um, you know, coming together now. Um he, he does believe in deliverance. He had a brother on uh, another man of God on his live stream just recently. And the, the name of their discussion, I think this is, yeah, this is a video I shared with me. you, mm -hmm. brother and yeah. Um What was it? Old uh, here. Let, I, let me double check. Cause I, I don't want to get it mixed up. Cause new days, yeah. old devils. Something. New days, old demons, old devils, demons. old gods, whatever the case Whatever, however you want to look at it, we're dealing with, in the year 2023, we're dealing with spirits and, and, and spiritual strongholds and, and, and demonic strategies that have been going on for years. For centuries. Years. <laughs> back, centuries. Oh, exactly, centuries, centuries, back to the Old Testament. We're still dealing with the spirit of Jezebel. We're still dealing with the spirits of Ahab, with the spirits of Mammon, with the spirits of with people who worship Baal. We we still deal with these same things. And, and just, just knowing how how much understanding the modern Western church still needs to receive and uh, take in, because again, a lot of it, it, it can be strange. It can be radical for your normal church goer which is why a lot of people a lot of pastors don't teach about it mm -hmm. but we've got it's basically a blind spot 
it's why a lot of these agendas are continuing to uh, pick up steam and, and gain a foothold in, in our families and, you know, on our kids and on, on, on society right now. Cause it's a, it's a huge blind spot, man. So, um, but no, man, other than that, I, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother week of teachings, honestly. I'd like to end with this verse, um, but strong meat belongeth to them that have age, full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. True maturity is more like going through the ranks of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom in order to discern the difference because a lot of people don't know the difference between good and evil. If you really look at it through the eyes of the world, it looks the same. It looks almost the same. It's like the other day, we just saw gay people have their church. They quote the same scriptures. They even call us the demons. <laughs> they, so you don't know the difference because it, the differences are easy to spot. But if you if you don't if you don't know the difference, even a regular person might join that church, not knowing good from evil. They don't think the gay church is God called is a God church, not knowing that the Holy Spirit is not deaf. You know, a demonic spirit is there. So it's very tough. So back to you, brother Roberto.